Every life. Yeah. Uh, well, preach on that. I ain't gonna talk about it anyways. <laughs> no. I was going to talk about this from Psalms of, of, uh, yesterday came to me. We were praying. We got over in the spirit and we were praying for some people that were sick. And uh, one young man we, who was in the ministry I'd met and uh, I was asked to go and visit with another pastor just to kind of, you know, just observe. And so I told him, I said, don't tell him who I am. Just tell him I'm your gardener. So I sat there and, and, and while they were talking, and he never he never would come out and, and say what he wanted to say. And I, I but the Lord, is, I sat there, I was looking at him. I said, "This guy's there's something wrong." I was getting the Lord was showing me things about his bodies, you know. And we all, especially people in, in the ministry, always want to be real spiritual, you know. So we think we don't think about people just physical needs. Right. And this guy was, uh, you know, I don't, I won't go into it. I don't. But I didn't do anything. I just sat there. I didn't say anything. I didn't. I didn't offer to step out. And, especially after he thought I was a gardener, I didn't step out to pray because he was like an apostle, you know. So I didn't want to step out and say, you know, is something wrong with your body? I, you know, I felt like something wrong with your certain things. I felt like the Lord. I didn't do it. And. Uh, I actually excused myself out of the meeting because he wasn't going to talk with I was around on things. So I left. And then later I found out that he was, uh, he's in the hospital right now in intensive care with heart failure. And I know I kicked myself in the butt. You know, I don't know that I could have changed it, but I could have at least, you know, pray for him. So when you get that auction, so I say, we want to, the Lord won't, I believe the desire of the Father is that we begin to see ourselves like He sees us. Amen. We're so uh, controlled or uh, controlled by our own opinion of ourselves sometimes, which came from somebody else's opinion, which has been passed down for generations. Are y'all get? Are y'all understand what I'm saying? And yeah. we if we don't step out and do things because we think. You know, we let the past guide our yeah. present, and 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 so we miss it. And we miss it. So this is a good thing to talk about. This is a good thing. These are these are five things. I stole this. I want to write it right up. I, I usually I don't do this, but I got this this morning. Um, email from Chris Valentine. How many of y'all know who Chris Valentine is? Nobody knows who he is. He's a prophet from Bethel. Uh, that's the church out in California. Right. And he's, real, he's a real practical prophetic teacher he's, and crazy. Uh, but these were, he said he mailed with these five things. And I thought, well, that sounds good. I think I'll copy that down. And, uh, maybe it'll keep me on track this Sunday. Praise God. <laughs> so how can you actually take a step toward changing the world? How do y'all, listen, maybe you don't care. I, I, hopefully before you leave today, you will, you will care. But how many want to see your world change? Amen. Amen. Come on, well, we know we're all selfish and we don't care about anything, but me, myself, us four, no more. Sometimes. Well, that, that's going to change this year. Uh, whether you like it or not, and that's going to change. <laughs> That the, that the Lord has put has put you in the earth to be a, a world changer. Now, I'm not trying to give you, you're not trying to get up the big head over this or anything. I'm a great son. He put you in this world to be a world changer. Amen. You take the, listen, to, you, the Lord wants you to take, that's why he gave the Holy Spirit to come live inside you, so that you could affect change, not only could the Holy Spirit affect change in you, redeeming you out of your past and those things, but you being becoming an agent of change, an agent of change. Yahweh never changes. Malachi, the, the third chapter of Malachi, say, "I am the Lord. I am Yahweh. I change not." Therefore, therefore, you sons of Jacob are spared. You better be glad that He don't change. 
He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank God for that. You need to understand that. The gods of the, the, uh, the, the other uh, peoples worshipped at that time. And what differentiated Yahweh from Yahweh from the other gods that others worshipped was that I am that I am. I am that I am. Yeah. I create. What is created? I create. He, but he was a God of covenant. That's right. Yep. He was a God of covenant. They were continually, other religions, other worshipers of other gods were continually have to, having to appease their God because their gods were capricious. Now you look at the Greek gods, you know, Zeus, Apollo, different ones, you name them. Well, they were all just, just, they were all fallen angels or the sons of fallen angels. They were actually the fallen angels. They were the sons. And they became mighty men on the earth and they were lived on in a legend and people worshipped them. But the thing about these gods, it, it, what, they, they, were, they were birthed half angel, half man. And so they took over the characteristics of man that were capricious, a fallen man. They were capricious. They changed their mind. They could get mad at you. They could not like you. Did they wake up feeling bad? So people were always like lived in a place of uncertainty because their gods that they served, they actually did things because they were they were spiritual beings. They did do things. They affected their lives in some way for the good or the bad. But, they, but the thing that differentiated the God of the Jews, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was this. He was a God of covenant. He said, I'm going to do it. And he did it. That's right. Yeah. He did, you know, it might have seemed a lot of times that people, it took a long time for it to come to pass, but he always did what he said. Amen. He watches, he said, the word says he watches, he watches over his word to perform it. To see it comes to pass. He's watching over every word that's ever been spoken into your life. Every word that you've received from the Holy Spirit. Not just somebody prophesying over you, but what you've read in the Bible and you've embraced as your own. Every word. He's, he's literally watching over it. He's watching over it. Looking for ways to cause it to be performed and come to completion in your life. You! Amen. You need to be aware of this, that He is watching over you. Right. There are angelic beings. If you see them, they, they're, they're, they're covered with eyes. Both of them have their wheels within wheels. That they, you know, I think I described the wheels within the wheels, and they're full of eyes. You can read this in the Bible. Don't take my word for it. They're full of eyes. Things in heaven, are, there are a lot of eyes in heaven. In the heavens, there are a lot of eyes. There are pillars that have eyes on them. They're, they're, they're strange looking things because they have eyes. You say, why? Because they see. They see. They see. They see. Why do they see? Because they've been assigned to do certain things and they want to keep an eye on what they've been assigned to. They keep their eye. They've, he's given his angels a charge over you. They have an assignment. They have been given an assignment. you understand? These are beings that are great in power and majesty and stuff. And yet the Father has called them to himself and said, I give you an assignment. You see that man? You see that woman? You see her? You na he named you. I know her. She came out of my heart. I've known her before the foundation of the earth. I said, I created her. I formed her before. I knew her before she was in her mother's womb. You see that woman? The angel says, yes, sir, because they don't talk back. The ones that talk back have been kicked out. He said, I give you an assignment. You watch over her. This is her book. Read her book. This is what I want to see in her life. That she's got a free will. She has to make up her. He, she has to make her choice. She has a freedom because she's been made like me. But this is her book, and I want you to do everything within your power, and all those assigned with you, to accompany her through her life on this earth, to make sure that if she makes the right choices. If she, if, she, if she does, it listens to my, if you'll hearken to the voice of the Lord today, I say all these blessings shall come upon you. They shall come upon you. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be going out. Blessed are you coming in. Yeah. Blessed you are in the field. Blessed you are in the city. Yeah. Your basket is blessed. Your star is blessed. You're blessed. Your body's blessed. Your children. Messenger 
represent from God, they're assignment to you. Yes. They're assigned to you. They're full eyes. And they're watching you when you sleep. They watch over you when you sleep. Yes. They watch over you when you wake. Hey, eh, Santa Claus. I know when you're naughty. I know when you're nice. They don't make no difference to them. They know their assignment. She's screwing up. Boy, we don't care. We're going to do our part. Because we serve the one who changes not. At least they do. We change, you know, for the good and bad all the time. So they're watching over you. They're watching over you. And you need to understand this. It's just not one of them. You wouldn't be able, there's one of mine, you can you call you call your guardian angel, whatever you want to call him. But listen, he got folks that work for him. And as you walk further into your assignment, whatever your assignment is, and whatever level of, of authority the Lord is is predetermined for you, then there are others that are assigned. But they're not assigned just to be your butler or your slave. They're aside for one thing. They're aside to make sure that that which is written in the book about you is not going to be interfered with unless you allow it. And you can't allow it. Jesus said it in Matthew. He said that whatever you allow on earth is allowed is already allowed in heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth is already been forbidden in heaven. So you need to understand we have certain you say we ain't teaching Calvinism. That's right. We ain't teaching predestination. You are pre-designed to be a certain certain thing. You are pre-designed. But then you get you got there's the element of faith and there is the element of cooperation. See, so I guess you know what side's over here and what side's over here. You know, I was raised a Methodist, you know, if you didn't do the right things you're going to hell, you know. You over here, it didn't matter if you what you did, you would you were predetermined to go to heaven or hell, or whatever, you know. And I both of them are, come on. Extremes. You get in one ditch on one side or the other, you're gonna get messed up. Amen. Amen. Now the fact is you were pre-designed. The Apostle Paul said you were predestined or pre-designed. I like to say it, pronounce it like it makes more sense. Pre-designed. You were designed to come to a place that God to be a, be like a yeah, but you were also given a free will to make the choice. I set before you today life and death, blessing and cursing. Right. I'd encourage you to choose life Amen. that you and your seed may live forever. And that's Yahweh said that. Yeah. Yep. Now that don't that don't that don't that don't seem to jive with everything's predetermined. But do you understand there's a script. If you have a if you have a movie, you're gonna make a movie, you have a script. I have notes. I've got a script. I rarely stick to it. Because <laughs> it's my script. That script. Of what I came up with. That what God came up with sometimes. You understand? But if you listen to the Holy Spirit, He'll get you back on track to the script you're supposed to be on. That's right. Listen to That's why you the Holy Spirit's important. You can't do away with the Holy Spirit. You, you, don't let Him. Don't shut Him out of your life. Amen. He's God. Amen. He wants this for you. Yep. But there's certain things, there's certain protocols, you know, somebody can come along and help you with, perhaps. Amen. So there are five things that like to cause your, your uh, break change in your world. He, all right, he says, here are the five keys. They're keys. You know, people, people, preachers are big on keys. I, mean, I am too. Keys let you in places, you know, you're locked out of them. Here are five keys to your living life intentionally. Say intentionally. Most people go on autopilot. <clears throat> most people, you, you realize that most of your functions, of uh, your physical functions especially, are, are, are subconscious. You don't think to, to, you don't think to regulate your heart. You don't think to, your brain, isn't it right, Chris? I, I've got somebody that knows something about medicine. You don't do that. You, all these are subconscious things. What you don't realize, a lot of other stuff that you, you do in your life is subconscious. Because they, it was programmed into you by, by your parents or whoever raised you or those around you influenced you. They pre and You're not conscious of it. People come up to you and say, do you know you're doing so-and-so? You know this? No, I wasn't aware of it. You weren't aware of it. You're doing it. 
You'd almost think that you'd almost think that they're making it up, you know. But you're doing it. But you're doing it sub, uh, subconsciously. It's, it, that means it's below your consciousness or your your consciousness of this this realm that you're this three this three four dimensional realms, length, breadth, height, and time. So this realm is the, where you're conscious right now. <laughs> But a lot of stuff subconscious. That's why you, you, Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What he's talking about was your subconscious. He wasn't talking about your, your, your conscious mind, this conscious information stuff. He was talking about getting the, getting, getting the God stuff down on the inside of you to where it reaches the subconscious level. So there, boy, your subconscious then will begin to cooperate with your spirit, with your spirit man instead of sabotaging you That's right. because you consciously many people consciously want to believe in healing they do but they think they say I believe in healing they, they recognize healing they see it in the Bible they know that but they, when they step out to, to receive healing or to pray for people they don't do it in faith <clears throat> because subconsciously down there below the surface there's an unbelief that was planted or, or programmed into you by religion or by your parents or by just general society you understand you follow me. You need to listen to this. You, so you, you need to reprogram. You need to recalibrate your 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 computer. You need a virus. You, you need a virus checker. You need something to get that crap out of you. So you're because your soul stands, listen, your spirit is seated with Christ in the heavenly places. That sounds weird, but it's true. Amen. See now you're in the, in the dimension of the realm of the, of the supernal realm that you can't can't perceive with your eyes or ears or whatever your sense five senses unless the Lord anoints you or change or break it you go through a portal anyway. But what stands between your spirit and your body, which is what you need to do stuff on this earth, right? Is your is your soul? Is your soul? Your mind? Your will? Your emotions? And they can undermine what church, what God is, who's speaking God, God is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and truth. So the, the spirit of God is speaking to your spirit. That's who's speaking to your spirit. She was talking about having an impression. Lean not to your own understanding. Lord, lead, lead to the impression that the Holy Spirit gives you to your spirit. But if your subconscious, is, is, which is in between, has not been renewed, your mind's not been renewed, you're, it'll undo you. It'll undo you. You can get every hand until you lost all the hair over your head. How do you think I lost all this hair? You lay hands on you. People can lay hands on you. They can prophesy on you. They can speak the word. But, it, but if you don't, we talked about it. If you don't mix it with faith, it is not going to profit you. That's right. Accumulating knowledge does not profit you. Amen. It's good. It's good to know stuff. I mean, it's good. It comes in handy if you will put it in its proper place. But it is not the, the end of all things. I'm not saying be dumb. Learn stuff. Put Gather knowledge. Gather it up. But then bring it under submission. Bring every thought under submission to God. Every thought, that means every thought every man's ever had, every, every thought you've ever had, every article you've ever read, those are all thoughts, they're all thoughts. He says, bring them on, take them into captivity. It's your job to take them into captivity and bring them under submission to, the, to Almighty God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> all right? So live intentionally. Live intentionally. Make up your mind you're going to live like you, who you are instead of just going through on autopilot. Do things that everything you do, we do it with intention. That you've got a goal set to do it. You understand? You want to do something. Whatever it is, that you've got a goal and, and you're going to focus on that. Because if you don't focus on it, you get distracted and you end up doing nothing. That's right. And we live in a world that's, that's hyper, hyper. I'm telling you, it was bad enough back when I was even a kid. But it's war I know, I've been there. I'm, I'm almost 70 years old. There's a difference. Stuff is ramped up, amped up. 
It's like the whole world's on methamphetamines. And there's distractions abound. You li you're living it. I, you know, talk to our grandsons and young people and what you're living it. You're listening. You're living in a different time. You're living in a time. You may you, you were born into it, so you don't know the difference. You're living in a time that that that, that the kingdom of darkness is vying for your soul as never before, because he knows that you are the generation Come on. that's going to kick his ass. Amen. Yeah. Did I say that? Yeah. And we old people. <laughs> See, you thought I was going to say something good. <laughs> we old, we, we've got a, a definite responsibility right. to watch over them and pray for all that. Not just pray for them, but teach them. Mm -hmm. All right. Share the word with them. Correct them. And love them. There you go. Especially love them. Amen. So what do you do? First step number one, do, or, do ordinary, listen, do ordinary, do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. When Saul was sent by his father to look for his lost donkeys, he didn't just give up when he couldn't find them on his own. Instead, he sought guidance from a prophet, Samuel. Now, let, let's get back now. It's the Old Testament. You don't go to a prophet to seek for guidance anymore. Mm -hmm. You do not go to because Because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And you're, the number one way God guides you is by Him speaking to your spirit. Amen. A prophet in the New Testament is a confirmer Amen. of what you've already got. That's right. And I don't give a rip who, who says otherwise. I know the truth. That's right. <laughs> now that does not mean someone that stands in, a, in, a, in, a, in the office of a prophet, that they don't necessarily just, just prophesy. They do other stuff in the spirit realm that you are not aware of. Amen. They're not, they're not, as one man says, they're not gumball machines for you to come up and put a nickel in to get your word. Amen. Amen. And that's what, that's what, I, I could stole this from somebody else too. He said, it made sense to me, he said, he said we've done, we've done, our prophets have done a great disservice to the, to the, to the, to the prophetic. That's right. By allowing ourselves to become these gumball machines that people could pay to get a word. And when I say I'm not, you know, I've never you know, had some, I'll give you more, give you five dollars if you work. I've never done that. But yet, yet I have been tempted. I've had people come to me. People want to do that to me, maybe because I'm not a very good prophet. I, don't know. I, well, I, I used to have people who would come to me for words. Can you tell me what about this? Are you in business? And I'm thinking, I'm not a dang psychic. I am not a psychic. I'm not reading your palm. I'm not reading your tarot card. If the Lord, I, I'll bless you. I will lay my hand on you and bless you because the Lord will bless you. I'll bless what the Lord bless you. You're a child of God. I'll bless you. Amen. I'll lay my hands on them. And if, if the Lord shows me something to tell them, I'll tell them. That's sure. just the way I operate. I don't know. But I sure ain't your psychic. Amen. Amen. And you're going to get in a lot of trouble running around looking for people giving you words. Amen. Come on. W wake up. The prophetic is, the, the, the strength of the prophetic and order is going gonna, is gonna to return, is returning to the, to the church. Amen. Amen. We went through our silly season, but it's serious now. Are you following me? Amen. Just like the, the, the real apostolic is going to show up. And it ain't gonna be all this mumbo jumbo garbage. I get pukes in my guts. Amen. All this this garbage. I'm the apostle over this. Shit. I'm the apostle. If you gotta tell somebody you're an apostle, you ain't one. Amen. You gotta put a title in front of your name to tell them what you are. You ain't one. Amen. Jesus said you know them by your their fruits. Yeah. You look at the check the fruit out of it. That's right. Yeah. 
It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a function, a gift to the body of Christ. Any fivefold ministry gift is a gift to the body of Christ. It is not one to be lording over people and telling them what to do, controlling their lives, telling them what kind of underwear they can wear, whatever. That's right. A right. rat, excuse me, a rat. God put you on this earth. He gave you the Holy Spirit, gave you the Word of God so you could learn how to follow Him. Amen. Not follow some guy or some woman or anything. Come on. We've got leaders in the body. Leaders are supposed to lead. They're supposed to go somewhere. And you're supposed to, hey, they're going somewhere. Let's follow them. But they're not supposed to drive you. Get in there. Get in there. Get in the kingdom. Get in the kingdom. They're supposed to go where they're and you, and you, they go before and you just follow them in there. Hopefully they put in the right hole. Because <laughs> there's been a lot of us we hadn't gotten the right hole with. We went the wrong door. And that's why you got the body of Christ. You've got so many people in the body of Christ not in church. They're not in there, they don't have nothing to do with it. I wouldn't. I told Pamela, I said, you know what? I, 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 this stuff goes on. I, I know stuff goes on around. Church stuff. I said, you know what? I don't blame folks. I wouldn't go to church either. Amen. Yeah. I wouldn't either. Not, there's nothing right. God made the church. The church is the body of Christ, man. But I'm talking about all this religious hocus pocus, Donald Oka stuff is, is bull. Right. And I'm not talking about true signs and wonders. I'm not, you hear me right? Hey, what's that, Bruce? He's turned into a Baptist college. <laughs> I just want the real thing, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Praise God, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. All right, we've got Paul. Paul, I mean Saul. You remember Saul, Old Testament? He said, out. His daddy sent him out and looked for his asses. He couldn't find his <laughs> asses. Dog, that's, that's a King James word, so don't get mad at me. Donkeys, we cleaned it up and called them donkeys. He set them out, and so Saul, you know, Saul wasn't king then, you know. He was just Saul. He's going out, and he's, he, he couldn't find his daddy's donkeys, but he's faithful, so he saw the prophet. That would be a type in our time of praying, listening to the voice of God for some direction about what don't leave you on understanding. You got me? That's right. See, you got me off on this rant about prophets and stuff. <laughs> But what he saw, and then Samuel, Samuel ended up, at, and we saw Samuel to find out where the jackasses were. Jeez. <laughs> I don't think I'm, I'm Bishop, I'm Bishop Cross. <laughs> I am a Christian. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Most people don't believe what I am. Uh, <laughs> Samuel ended up anointing him as king. Now get this. If I can, if I can sense this. I can take you a guy's good message to mess it up. Okay. <laughs> he's going about his own. Do you understand? He's going about his own daily life being responsible as a son, just doing what his, his natural father told him to do. He couldn't find it, so he said, I got to, you know, I guess I got, it's like we always say, I guess we just got to pray. <laughs> I like it when we, some people say stuff like it. We just got to pray. It's like we run out of all other options, but now we got to just let's see what God says. Yeah. Why not just pray first? Amen. Because I look, I clue. Let me give you a clue. This will help you. Write this down. Write this down. This is a clue. All the other ideas you had before you prayed and heard from God, they were already not going to work. <laughs> I remember his brother Hagen Sr.'s funeral, his grandson. He actually had a grandson that was backslidden, who was, who was on drugs and an alcoholic. They didn't want him to come to the funeral because they didn't want nobody to know that Brother Hagen had real people in his family. But, but by that time, he had come to know the Lord. I mean, come back to the Lord, and he was walking, and, you know, I guess that's what they let him come back. I'll probably get in trouble for this. Time. Uh, and he got up, they didn't want to get up and speak, but he got up and spoke because he loved his papa. 
He said, you know, I, I've tried all this stuff. You know, I, you know, I got, I tried this, I tried this, and I got involved in the drugs, and I got this and that. And I'd come to Papa, and I said, Papa, this, I got this idea. And he'd, he'd spill out his idea of what he was going to do with his life or whatever, you know, he thought he was supposed to do. He said, Brother, Brother Hayden didn't talk much. People don't realize that. He didn't talk much. And he just, he just looked at him and said, ain't going to work. <laughs> How's that work? How, how do you like that word? And Brother Richard, show what the Lord, the Lord showed you about my, I guess, great idea I've got. I had a dream. It ain't going to work. Well, you wouldn't come back to me anymore, that's for sure. But that's the way it is. You know, tell the truth. If it ain't going to work, it ain't going to work. And let me tell you something. If it ain't God's ain't in it, it ain't going to work. Amen. You can try around everything you want to to make it work, but it ain't going to win the end. It ain't going to work. Right. But your pride keeps you pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and beating it, and beating it, and beating it, and beating it, trying to make it work, but it ain't going to work. That's right. Oh, this is good. Gee, you made it cricket. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> so, so he went out on an ordinary task and ultimately led him to his destiny. Because the prophet, he showed up and asked the prophet where the donkeys are at. The prophet looks at him and anoints him as king of Israel. The point being is, as you pursue your everyday, mundane, what you think, task in life, if you do them intentionally sure. with, a, with, a, with, with your destiny in the forefront, you're gonna, God's going to make sure somebody's going to come across your path or some uh, angelic being or some, somebody from Him is going to come across your path to empower you or to turn you in, in, to, the, to another man. So take, today face the ordinary things. Face, that's hard for us to do. It? That's what Monday morning's all about. Face the everyday administrative task in your job, taking out the trash. I talked to you last week, I said I had the glory of God come in the toilet stall with me, cleaning the toilet, you know? Make your kids lunches, do it with intention. You know the secret to a good cook? A good cook is somebody that cooks with love. I've heard that it sounds so corny to so many people, but a good cook cooks with love. What, what, what kind of love? How do you cook with love? Because you love food, you love to cook? No, that, you're, that you intentionally are preparing something for someone else. You're sacrificing your time and your, your talents, whatever they are, for somebody else. To, to, to not only give them pleasure in eating it, but to nourish their body and to all kind of and to come and she like stand there and she get she about keep cold or she come on you see come on you go so tall my guy in that I have told my get the east in the board get the but ain't done the get egg on the get ding on that guy dig dog and dig on the dig on the head shock and my guy the dig on the board they might get the but ain't done the book good though. She come out of there. She did you call it down the money and don't let it in the day. The mother did the cook did the mother down it. They give a naked to the day. I'll try to translate that in a minute. I'm not supposed to. But oh, Jesus. God, you can infuse, listen, you can feel, I think the gist of it says you can infuse, you can infuse what you think is insignificant. Mm -hmm. You can infuse it with the power and the love of God mm -hmm. and it will absolutely transform a person's life. Sure. You, God's put that power in your hands. Sure. Put that power in your life. Uh -huh. don't, don't take any task as being meaningless or mundane or useless, or, oh God, I wish I didn't have to do this. Come on, I tell you, set your, whatever you set your hand to, set your, your heart to it. 
set your hand, your heart to your hand. Let your let your hand be an extension of your heart. Amen. Let your hand be an extension of your heart. Let your tongue, let your mouth be an extension of your heart. Let your ears, what you hear, let what you see be an extension of your heart. And then, when it is, then, then they shall come. They will come. He will come. They will come to assist you and cause the supernatural to intervene and to come into this thing and cause it to begin to work. Amen. And work a, work a wonder work that has never been worked before. Thank you for your Amen. I'll steal this guy's stuff more. Steward your responsibilities. Steward, I'm going to get through this. Steward your responsibilities. You may be tempted not to take your current job or role seriously. I won't ask for a show of hands. But I like to propose that God wants to meet you at the place of your responsibility. Amen. Your responsibility. After the birth of Jesus, an angel showed up at the place where the shepherds were keeping watch over their sheep. In the Gospels, Jesus came to Peter, Andrew, James, and John while they were fishing and mending their nets and called them to be disciples. What we can learn from these examples is what God wants to meet you in the place where you he, he gave you responsibility. Amen. If you need to adjust your listen, you need to adjust your attitude towards your job or your school or whatever you're doing right now, then, then today will be a great day. That would be a good a great day to do that. Amen. Right now. To adjust your attitude. I'll tell you a story right quick. I before this is yeah, God, years ago. How long have we been married? Forty six years? This is just Ewa was just bored. And we've been doing about four years. She was born, our oldest daughter. I had a job. I got. A, we moved to Tunica, back to Tunica, and I got a job with a house, a painting company, painting houses. And I, they, I mean, I made one hundred twenty dollars a week. <clears throat> wow, big money! I said, oh, big money. And I was the low man on the top of the hole. We had a con the guy I worked for had a contract to clean up government housing. They built us uh, uh, houses down in, in Tennessee for people that have lived in, in destitute conditions their whole life, but now they were they moved to these nice new houses, but they didn't bother to give you any instructions about what to do. So sadly, with the toilets, since the, the folks that had moved there had been living in places where they had outside toilets. Anybody know what an outside toilet is? Yep. That's a hole in the ground. You, poop in it, you know, you don't have to flush it or nothing. There's no sanitation. Well, so when, the, when, the to, when the toilet would cease to work in the house, they would just look for the next best thing to go in and it would usually be the bathtub. You don't think human beings would do that, but they will do that. And guess what my job was? Because nobody else on the crew who'd been there for years, I was a new guy, who, guess who got to shovel out to this manure? You say, God, Brother Richie, you mean people actually went to the bathroom in, in bathtubs? Yes, I have, I have shoveled out bathtubs where it was up and already quit using them because they filled them up. And, and I'll tell you right now, I did not have a good attitude about this. I was not the spiritual giant that I am now. Are you following me? Yes, sir. You ever heard about, you ever heard the expression, what do you do for a living? I shovel. Well, that's what I did for a living. And I got I got a hold of some spiritual truth. And everything give thanks for the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Right. And so I, I this this is a quick you know, God will do he'll do stuff real quick for you when you're you're young and you're just getting into this stuff because he knows you ain't got the patience that you do now. And I promise you, I, I said, Lord, I'm going to do this. I'm going to shovel this for you. Now, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to And I started, I just shoveled it. I've been shoveling it. I said, might as well enjoy it. So, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you for my job. I think I got a job. I can feed my family. Pay, I can pay the rent. My car note was $20 a month. I can pay that. And, you know, on a 68 Rambler, you know. Digging, shoveling, 
And I, this is the truth. I got home and I, I had a call from a, a man who had called my mother and said, what's your son doing? She said, he's working for a plate. And I said, I need somebody to come to work for me and help me run this auto parts store. Now, that was another level of hell too. <laughs> but it was a move up from Sheldon. <laughs> But it, but the Lord, see, see as, as soon as I got my attitude right, my circumstances changed. Amen. And the Lord, but the, and the Lord put me in the. I'm very shy. I told you this. I'm very, very shy. I don't like getting in front of people. I, I, I'm hard. I, you know, I don't have as much trouble now, but I, I used to. I could talk to people. He put me in an auto parts store where every day people would come in and nobody was happy because their cars broke down. And, and nobody wanted to see me because who's this dumb kid that don't know nothing about cars or nothing like this and stuff. And, uh, and I had to learn how to deal with people that didn't like me. And had to take rejection over and over and over. You know. Sometimes I didn't do so good. I was jumped over the counter with a hammer to hit a guy one time. I said, I've had enough of this crap. I'm going for it. I'm going to kill him. Because <laughs> he teaches you, you have to, you know, I will tell you, auto parts stores, you had people that actually, mechanics especially, they knew you didn't know what they knew, and they liked to flaunt it, and they'd come in there and mess with you. Yeah. You know, they, they would intentionally, you know, ask you for stuff that didn't exist and stuff, and you'd spend an hour in the catalog looking for it. Because back then, we didn't have computers, you know, we'd look at these big books. You know. And then they'd laugh at you. So I, I lost my temper one day. I grabbed the biggest wrench. I looked around. We had wrenches behind us, you know, back behind you, know, all the auto parts store. And I looked for the biggest crescent wrench. They used to look a real big one, you know. And I went for it. And I said, I'm going to come over the counter and I'm going to kill this man. <laughs> then I learned how to repent and ask God for forgiveness. <laughs> That's a true story, too. <clears throat> so when you attempt to take your current job and roll ser not seriously, <clears throat> I'd like to propose that God wants to meet you through place of responsibility. Amen. We went through all that. Okay. The point is that God was training me for the for for a, a, a pulpit or public ministry by taking me out of a hole, literally. I don't make, keep making a big deal out of this. Kids love it. They just love it. Every time I say something like that, they laugh. Nah. But I won't do it because uh, you will not right there getting all upset with me. He took me out of that place and put me, and that was, that was, and I stayed there. I went from there to another place, to another place, to do the same, just increasing a little time, till I finally went into, went to Bible school. He was preparing me. If he, if he didn't put me, if he didn't put me in a public ministry from where I was right then, right then, I would, I, I could have done it. I would have killed myself. I could have took it. I, my nerves wouldn't take it. You understand? So what I'm trying to say is everything in your life, you've got to see everything in your life as a preparation for your, and I'm not saying you're going into the ministry. God forbid, I wouldn't wish that on you for anything. Uh, but whatever God's destiny has got for you, what you're doing right now is a preparation for what that is. Mm -hmm. right. There's something hidden in that, whatever you're involved in right now, God's got you in right now, is that there's something hidden, there's a treasure hidden in there, he's, he's using it to prepare you for something else you, to move you. Amen? Yeah. You ask me, you want change. You, you, you got to start looking, the well, you got to look at things different. This is part of seeing too. It's not just seeing angels. That's right. It's not just seeing heavenly beings. It's seeing, it's seeing the kingdom yeah. in the earth. Seeing kingdom stuff in the earth. You got that? All right, let's go on. I'll try to finish. Behave like you're passionate even when you don't feel like it. Oh! <laughs> Behave like you're passionate even when you don't feel like it. In a good sports team, the good team will rise to the occasion and play up. What's it going to say? When going against a stronger team. However, it is the championship teams, the true winners that play up all the time. I don't know anything about sports, but I have to ask one of y'all, is that true? Mm -hmm. Steve, you go to the like that. It's easy, it's, it's really easy to do your absolute best job when you're feeling passionate. But an extraordinary person does this all the time. 
even when they don't feel like it. How can you play up your current season? How can you become passionate about your current place where you're at right now, wherever it is? Passion is infusing your being into something. Amen? The fifth thing, which is, everybody go, yay, it's the last one. God bless you. <laughs> Seek first. Seek first his kingdom. Listen, listen, boys. Seek first his kingdom. We hear that all the time. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That's in Matthew. Right? Is that what Jesus said? And, and, and we still ain't got it. Most of us ain't got it right. We're still seeking the things. The only reason we're seeking the kingdom and his righteousness is to get the things. <laughs> Come on, man. But so I'll be honest with you right here. I grew up in the world of faith movement. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Half the people that went to Bible school with me, they were just there to get rich. They thought there was some kind of gimmick being taught to get rich. You can't get rich. You can. But you necessarily end up with the right riches. He says, seek, Jesus says, seek first, and we're, it's where we get the word priority, priority from. Seek first the kingdom, God's kingdom. That means his rule is reign. If people don't know what, the church does not yet, I, I got kicked out of a, I got kicked out of a, 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 a I lost my ordination in a, in a certain group because I talked back then about kingdom. And they said it was a heresy. And everybody teaches about kingdom. I told people it wasn't no, I better shut up. <laughs> hey, he got kicked out of something else. He got kicked out of a lot of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> it, like the par, your priority is the kingdom. The Lord dealt with me about this. And he, he spoke to me very severely several years ago about this. I, I kept saying, Lord, why don't, this, why don't this thing take off? You know, We've been doing this a long time. How come you don't know? He said, he said, well, if you quit looking, seeking your kingdom instead of mine, it might work. I mean, he's, he's real rough sometimes, you know. Yeah. I said, whoa, that's a lot of blow. <laughs> what do you mean, seeking my kingdom? <laughs> See, your main interest is to promote yourself and what people think about you, and, and if you're accepted by people around you, and, and, and you know. Mm, oh, boy. Instead of being concerned about what they think about me and talking about him, daddy, you know, what they, what they're, you know. He said, if you'd seek first, and just concentrate, your whole purpose out here is to focus on on what I want. I, this is a government. That's another thing. I did, I hated the word government. We associate the word government. Most people hate the word government because we associate it with uh, politics and, and, and natural government. You need to understand, though, that that, that that is a supernatural thing, too. That's right. That's where it, the design for it originally came from heaven. Not the way the people are conducted it, but the design was. Government, we don't like the word government because it has bad connotations. We don't want to have anything to do with the government because the government takes our money, our taxes, and rules and regulations, and all that. But uh, they, you gotta think, you gotta have your mind renewed to go, the government of the kingdom. Amen. The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness. Just, that's justice too. Mm -hmm. That means, that means you, you know, you're, you're treated fairly. You're not screwed over on them. Right. them. Just righteousness, peace, which is peace, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Provision, Amen. protection, provision. Wholeness, soundness. Money! Yeah. That's all in the, in the shalom. Amen. You understand? That's in the government. And then what happens? The joy of the Holy Spirit. What is the joy of the Holy Spirit? Because of the righteousness that's been done in your life. And because the peace has been done in your life. Amen. And you, the, the, the wholeness has been uh, come to your life. And you get full of joy. You get happy. You're full of joy because the joy you got didn't come from the world. It came from God's kingdom. 
That they saw Jesus' shoulders as the government of the kingdom rise. Amen. That's right. And it ain't like governments, earthly governments. The United States, I'm, I'm not anti United States. We, we've got the best thing going. It's a mess, but it's the best thing going. That's right. I've been places where it's. I went to the Ukraine right after the wall fell, the communism. I went there and I thought, God, is this, is this the people? Literally, I had a revelation. Is this the people that we were scared of our whole life? When they didn't have anything, they had the old ragged computers that didn't even work. You know, the guy sitting there at the airport, look at your passport, take your money and drop it down through a hole into a cardboard box. That was a high tech communists that we were so scared of. Yeah. <laughs> I've been places is crooked, you know, Mexico's crooked. Crooked, crooked. You know, you don't know who the police go kill you or the cartels go kill you. Because they both dress the same and been armed by the same people. Yeah. Our government. I mean, y'all remember, remember Fast and Furious. I, I, I listened to a, 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 a board, I mean, a drug agent from Mexico tell a story about it. He said, we, got, we, had to, we had to up our ante, man. The cartels got, they got, uh, they got 50 cal Barrett rifles from the United States, and they got five, I can't remember what they call it. It's a, it's a little bullet fired, it's armor piercing. It looks about the size of a 22, a 5 7 something like that. He said, we, we had to start wearing body armor and ride around in armored tanks. He said, and then they were shooting holes at us because the Americans were giving them all these weapons. Yeah. To fight the war on drugs. Yeah. Oh, I got trouble right there. Then. <laughs> this is man's government. Sure. That, that we're talking about doing stupid stuff. Right. Who in the heck would, if you got a war on somebody, you supply them with weapons that are superior? Mm -hmm. Who in their right mind does that? Mm. Ain't in their right mind. Right. Right. Get in your right mind. Amen. Get in your right mind. That's what the fifth thing. You will change your life. Seek first the kingdom. See, make, be serious about it. Quit, quit scurrying around. Coming to church Amen. is not seeking the kingdom of God. Amen. I appreciate you coming. But start in your everyday life. Start in, engaging the Spirit of God in your everyday life. That's engaging. Right. The, whether you see or feel anything or not at first, do it. Engage God. Right. Next, time, later, next time you cook an egg, engage the Holy Ghost. Amen. I can see it right now. Somebody cooking an egg, engaging the Holy Ghost, and they hear the Holy Ghost say, the worst cook I've ever had to do. <laughs> but I ain't giving up on it. Keep on. <laughs> God's got a real good sense of humor. Amen. Uh, that, 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 I'm born to get by the angels now. They don't, they don't. I can tell you, you go, I take it to Joshua. When, when Joshua run up on that angel, and, he, and Joshua says, are you for us or against us? He said, neither one of them. He said, he said let me ask you a question. <laughs> are you going to do what Yahweh said? Uh, they don't sound like those little fat, fluffy cherubim sitting around me. That's right. This rascal. The Lord even said, and you read that, and said, he said, he said, I sent an angel before you. Mm -hmm. And to, for you to follow that angel, into the promised land, he will, he'll take care of you. He says, but be careful. This is the Lord 
warning. He said, be careful to do what he says, for he is not like me. He will not pardon your sin. Mm -hmm. right. One guy says, it's like to have the Terminator with you. Yeah. It's like, it's a good one to be on your side, but don't cross it. That's right. Because they don't have no, some of them don't have no sense of humor. They're assigned to do something. And even if it's to help you, you get in the way, you quit doing what God told you to do. They're, just, mm -hmm. they're very serious. They're more serious than church. Is this sure. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord of God. This is my five stolen steps. Praise the Lord. Let's stand up. Praise God. Oh, he's a five-step broke. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't mean I'll have ten steps. I'm not making fun of it. I'm sorry. I apologize. Have a lot of people. Praise God. <laughs> oh, girl. If we could just, just have a Holy Ghost dispenser, just, just. No, not to do that. It's like not to dispense the Holy Ghost. It's the joy of the Holy Ghost to me with it. <laughs> oh, everybody go. Oh, everybody go like this. Oh! I got a scripture for that. Psalms 400. Shout unto the Lord. Yeah. It means to make a real weird laughing noise. <laughs> Shout unto the Lord with the voice of trial. Yeah. Give him praise. Give him praise. Glory to God. Yeah. Bless him. Bless his name. Bless his name. By you need his name. Yeah. The name above every name. The, the, the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Yeah. There's no other name given under heaven whereby a person can be saved. Glory to God. Jesus. Yeshua Hamashia. Woo! Shakara Basata. Enter his courts. Enter his gates for thanksgiving. Oh, oh, his gates for thanksgiving. Confessing, oh, yeah. How great, how great he is, yeah. And his courts with Tehila. Singing and joyful singing and songs of victory, yeah. In his courts. Thank you, Father. Shikarabasa. Thank you, Lord. Step through your gates, Lord. Step through your gates right now, Father. Into your courts, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father. Right now is a good time. At least I'm there. There's a couple of other people there right now. You so ought to get in agreement. We're getting in agreement with you right now. Yes. Whatever it is on your mind or your heart, that said that pick you something impossible right yeah. now. Yeah. Something that God can show out in right now. She caught up Oh, Karanabashatabasata. Thank you, Father. We come in agreement right now. According to the word of God, with the desires of your heart. With those things that are lying with the book written about you before the foundation of the world. Yes. With your destiny, with the plans and the purposes of Almighty God in your life, individually, your family, and your, yes. your, the, your metron, your realm that you've been set as a king over. Yes. To rule and to reign in right, true righteousness and justice in the earth, bringing peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Shikarabakashata. Father, we close every gate of the enemy right now. Father, the north gate, the south gate, the east gate, the west gate, all gates of darkness, we decree and declare them shut by the angelic beings assigned right now to protect and make provision for the body, this body in Jesus' name. Father God, we shut every atmosphere right now, Father God, the, the atmosphere of darkness and depression and doom and gloom, Father. In Jesus' name, we speak right now that the winds of the living God blow through right now, blow out that foul atmosphere from this place. In the name and out of your house, and out of your life, and out of your life. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we engage the realms, Lord, the lines of power that run through this 
place. Yes, Lord. Where the enemy is high tech place to places of power in people's lives. The line of supply right now. Father, we come. Come on, you come up. You shake out time on us. Father God, we take the by spirits of darkness that have interrupted that lines of supply of life. Be broken right now, including physical illnesses. against these people, Father, against me. Altar erected, Lord. Let it be crumbled. Let it be dashed. Let it be destroyed, Lord. Every altar bearing our images and pictures of us, Father God. Let it be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let it be plot, every plan, every scheme, every survey. Oh, be survey. Break your survey of tools right now, in Jesus' name. This place has been lying, laid out by God. It's been laid out by Yahweh in Jesus' name. And these lines and these boundaries shall not be crossed. The lines and the boundaries of houses and homes of the people here, those here, and those who put their faith in, they will not be crossed in Jesus' name. Move, Father. Move heaven. Move earth. Right now on behalf of the saints of God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Father. In the name. Wonderful Jesus. Come on, 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 come Make his beautiful face shine on you. Give you peace. Shalom. Give you grace. Increase. In Jesus' name. Let it be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.